Here's a quick look at two Revenge of the Fallen Legends class toys, recolored from molds I've covered before, and were previously packed together for the first live action movie line. As much as Hasbro loved their G1 redecos of Bayverse designs at the time, Ironhide didn't get his until the second film. That's restraint. Enforcer Ironhide coats the weapon specialist in his namesake's red and grey colour scheme with a few metallic paint apps thrown in. If the movie accurate deco bores you, this one's more lively, but it doesn't improve what is a pretty subpar rendition of the GMC top kick. It's too narrow, the cab is too small, and his arms just stick out the back. I mean, it's still clearly a pickup, just a slightly malformed one. At least the cannons in the bed can pass off as cargo. Outside of the silver chest plate, Enforcer Ironhide's robot colour scheme isn't much different. Though it would admittedly call more attention to them in truck mode, the unpainted arms and cannons is just a bad look. The articulation consists of ball-jointed elbows and hips, and sideways arm swivels. Basically his posability is on the level of the bumblebee mold. That aside, this is still the better mode. For one, it's well proportioned. His broad, strong upper body makes you question if he even needs his cannons. Also, they actually captured Ironhide's bovine-like head, as well as his weird chest construction, with the angled truck front halves divided by that aforementioned chest plate. A lot of his other toys struggle to pull this off for one reason or another, but this is one of the better attempts by default, due to being pretty stable. Pretty much all toys of Sure Shot, Grindor from the Revenge of the Fallen line, are recolored from Blackout, albeit in different ways. The mainline Voyager was grey, but the Legends figure is done in a brighter blue than Blackout, if just barely. Good thing they added camouflage, otherwise he'd be too derivative. As Legends class alt modes go, this is a solid and clean heavy lift cargo helicopter that Blackout, the Pave Low, and Grindor, the Super Stallion, fall under. With spinning rotors, though the main rotor halves are intentionally unaligned for simplicity, and it's only noticeable from certain angles. Grindor's robot mode reveals some dark, metallic, military green paint apps. They don't add much to the deco, but they don't clash or ruin the look either. Among the original movie cast, Blackout's robot design was one of the better executed at this size. They worked in the aggressively spiked head both he and Grindor share. The proportions are pretty good, except maybe his arms could be longer? And the kibble, like the rotor blades and tail fin, either swivel or fold out of the way so it's not intrusive. This mold's articulation consists of ball-jointed shoulders, hips and knees, with the elbows hinging sideways. Doesn't seem like much, but by virtue of actually having knees, albeit ones that only bend outwards, Grindor surpasses Ironhide in posability. Quality, not quantity. I got a comment on my Cliffjumper vs Recon Barricade video, saying a lot of the early live action movie Legends molds haven't aged well. Though he's not the worst, in the case of Ironhides, I can see that, and these colours don't do much to enhance it. Grindor's fares better, though I wish more was done with the deco to distinguish him further from Blackout. Still, he's the clear winner of the two for me. Next up is Transmetal's 2 Cheetor. Until then, till all are one. <laughs>